Welcome, Wargamers, to the blood-soaked shanty quarter of the Mortal Realms, because today we are talking about the Black Lanes. One of the major districts in Ulfenkarn, set in the Age of Sigmar universe, as part of our, our continuing series on the city. This is meant to set game masters and players up for a great time exploring it in the game Soulbound, which is the Age of Sigmar role-playing game. And so today, we are going to be talking about the Black Lanes as a district of the city, with its own problems, locations, enemies, and more. And so today we're going to do a spoiler-free walkthrough of the Black Lanes and really kind of try to understand it as an area on the map. We're going to chat about the defining traits, things you'll encounter, and as well as some hot goss. And when I say hot goss in this series I've been mentioning, it's not spoilers, it's just stuff that if you were to kind of like, you know, listen really intently amongst the populace, just general information you'd pick up, stuff you kind of just figure out. Now, one thing I like to add right up top here is that this is all possible because the awesome folks at Cubicle 7 sent me an early copy of Ulfenkarn, City at the Edge of Death, and because of wonderful folks like you. If you are looking for any Soulbound stuff to get your core book or bestiary, anything like that, please consider using one of the affiliate links in the description down below. Using that link goes a long way to supporting me, my wife, our cats, the whole channel. It's all life-changing stuff, and I'm so appreciative for each one of you who does. Now, unlike other parts of the city that we've mentioned before that have a before and after, the black lanes are a little bit different. In fact, on the surface, little has changed if you're talking about just the way it's written in, say, like an encyclopedia. This was the cramped living district of the middle class, full of schools, hospitals, and homes for many who likely worked in the other districts of the city or its ports. And that didn't change during the Age of Chaos, and it didn't even really change when Ragikar took over, but like a lot of things in all of Ulfenkarn, rather than changing, it just got much worse. Remember, our boy Ragikar, the wolf who took over the city, doesn't, doesn't know much about humans. Honestly, he kind of reminds me a little like an evil version of Laszlo from uh, what we do in the shadows of just, ah, this is your human home and your human food. Like, he just has no concept. So he looks at the city and he's like, oh, that's where, that's where the humans go. That's where the homes are. And so, when the Necroquake hit, Ragikar took this as his chance to corral all the living things into, of the city into one place. The idea being, we don't need free your own cattle. We, we gotta put these guys in a pen, which is exactly what it is. So on the surface, like I said from the top, it's it's been the residential district forever and it never changed. But when Ragikar took over, the population tripled you know, I mean, it, within that district, because he just compressed the entire populace in there. Every day, the Ulfen Watch patrols endlessly, oppressing the populace while also corralling them into one district. Basically, they want the Ulfen Karn, the Ulfen Watch rather, to be able to crisscross through there and just pick up people that have wronged them in any way, get as much food as possible. Everybody else needs to remain within the Black Lanes if possible, because that's where they want to be kept. The Elfin Watch allows them only the most basic freedoms to survive. Uh, things like being herded out to farm and fish, like we talked about in earlier videos. Uh, purges are regular and fear of the law is rampant because the, you know, the price for crimes is always either blood or death. Sometimes both. Also, while the housing was always cramped to an extent, it took on its own shantytown kind of vibe ever since then. So the population of Mournhold as an entire region relocated to this particular district. And the way it's described, like I kind of almost imagine in my mind, right? If you close your eyes and think of Venice, where you have um, you have like a lot of waterways, viaducts, and, and honestly, Ulfenkarn's not terribly far off from that or what used to be Mournhold. And buildings are super tight, but they tend to be built vertically and narrow rather than, you know, wide ways. There's no sprawl, is what I'm saying. And and it's kind of depicted that way, but imagine now that same shot of Venice if it's like Mad Max, and there's like corrugated steel going between all the different buildings, and in fact, they've been patched up with so much ad hoc junk that they almost become one massive superstructure. Like, they, there's, there's no ending to each block. That's kind of the idea that we're getting here when we talk about the Black Lanes, is there's just people on top of people and they just kind of kept building onto whatever was there to make some meager existence. All of those claustrophobic corridors are linked by improvised bridges, and the whole sections of towns are just kind of like spider-nesty built together. 
So it doesn't look like distinct blocks with their own personality, which is actually what I've heard described in Venice. It sounds beautiful and wonderful, but rather this is, uh, the black lanes are one massive amalgamation of like human oppression. And honestly, that's the theme here. And I won't sugarcoat it. <laughs> like if your team comes to Olfenkarn and they want to save this place, winning the hearts of the people is a part of that task. As we talked about in episode two, their misery and their hopelessness is directly connected to the setting itself and how quickly it deteriorates. So to that end, this is the center of suffering in the city. It's where you're gonna hear and see the individual tragedies of so many residents. You're gonna be begged for aid or relief in some way and you'll find a bunch of people in desperate need of heroes and all of those folks are intermingled with a lot who are openly suspicious, if not hostile, to any kind of perceived kindness, assuming it's a trick by Rajikar or a lackey or someone who wants to rat them out for blood, which is fair. So the, the plight of the people, I feel like, is more than anything the main theme of the Black Lanes, which makes it perfect for getting quests, for understanding what's going on in the city, certainly for understanding, like, you know, acquiring information, hot goss, that kind of stuff would be very accessible here just by the sheer amount of people to talk to. And even though I've described this heavy, cramped, and dark place, there's still actually still like locations, individual things within it. It's not one note because the kinds of suffering and tragedy that you can feel are not one note. So let's give an example. I like my barber example for uh, the market district. We'll do another one of those things here. This one is called the Cometarian Mission Post. It is a missionary posting for the Church of Azir, spreading the good news of Sigmar. Uh, and at one point it was full of Sigmarite healers and preachers and war priests. And they had the sense that something terrible was going down in Shaiish. Remember the timeline of Ulfenkarn and Mornholt or whatever. Age of Chaos happens. Rajikar is still in the city. Everything's still friendly. And they actually weather the Age of Chaos pretty well. The Age of Sigmar begins. They build the Skyport. Carriage and Overlords are coming in. And then a few, I don't know. I don't know if they actually put a timeline on it. But several decades later is when the Necroquake happens and Rajikar takes charge. So there was this gap of time where like they were trying to connect with the greater cities of Sigmar. And so you have missionary churches opening up. But the problem is... All the missionaries who came here immediately realized that something's terribly wrong because uh, if you kind of like zoom out of Ulfenkarn for just a second, the meta narrative of Age of Sigmar, things got really wiggity when Nagash was about to do the, the Necroquake spell. There was like all kinds of prophecies, bad visions, everything. So the people here knew like, man, something's just coming and I don't know what it is. I can't put my finger on it. And then there's just like the shockwave of a nuclear death bomb going off in the distance. It's basically how it went down. And of course, when the Necroquake hit, all the worship here uh, in the city really stopped. Rajikar's guys put an immediate kibosh on any kind of religious services, killed anyone who was a devotee of anything that they could find. And what makes this place interesting, this missionary place, is that their ghosts still haunt the, the untouched halls. Meaning, all the missionaries were out trying to help people when the Necroquake was starting. They had that big wiping of death magic across the entire region. We mentioned it flash froze some other districts. So nobody was really here, and yet they haunt the place. And they haunt it fiercely. So to the point where there's like all these treasures, weapons, medical supplies, everything is locked up tight, and the ghosts defend it. Not only that, they also basically babble a bunch of warnings and secrets they wish they had shared in life. So if they have information about other threats, other things in the city, they can help you. Now their information is old, they can't leave, so like it might require a little bit of updating, but they do have resources for you. But only, <laughs> only for those who they deem worthy to share it with. Remember, they have a, uh, they have a faction alliance, if you will. They are Sigmarite priests. So if your posse is full of vampires, they probably will not be very receptive to helping you. But you gotta remember that this thing, all these missionaries, these church folks are dying when the Necroquake happened is a micro tragedy. And this region, the Black Lanes, is the lane, or essentially the district rather, of micro tragedies. There's a whole section of the city that's overrun by flame ghosts because when the Necroquake hit, 
they were standing outside directly facing it and it ignited their souls and so they've been stuck in this weird flash frozen on fire screaming ghost forever. There's a Sylvaneth embassy that used to be beautiful and that kind of bring life to this little pocket of death here. And now it's used as like hanging trees for criminals. Everything's dead. There's a print works, which never actually saw the chance to live up to its promise of revolutionizing education and knowledge. Like imagine if the Gutenberg press was sacked in a raid right before people realized what it could do. Right, I mean, they made a few things. Here's a few books. We have a small, a few small print runs of stuff, but like, it didn't really click quite yet. Meaning, parts of the Black Lanes are full of exceptionally rare knowledge that you you could definitely benefit from, if not you, the locals. But you got to find it, and and all of these things when you kind of back out and you take them together, they're the result of countless tragedies that ripped apart the living of Mornhold as it descended into the hell of Wolfenkarn. It's meant to be a prison for cattle. Um, dire wolves circle its perimeter to keep the populace kind of huddled in. They're, they're forced to work during the day. They're forced to hide at night. They're bled dry as much as possible. And as we mentioned before, the suspicion of some folks is that the vampires are trying to infiltrate to manipulate them, and sometimes they are. Torgilius the Chamberlain has his own spies in there trying to kind of basically gauge the populace and see how they can be manipulated against Rajikar. Because again, you control the food, you control the city. And all of those things have to be overcome to change the course of the city. Now, let's move into the why is this cool section, right? This is, I do this at the end of every video, just kind of backing up and putting it in the context of the greater story. Who cares about the Black Lanes? It's the center of suffering, the stories of fear, but also of opportunity for the cunning. I made a brief synopsis of the other districts, right? Uh, Ebon Shade is about entertainment. Gaunt's Lectern is about knowledge, hunting. I think what really makes the Black Lanes important is whether your party is good or bad. Or I should clarify whether your party's goal is to save Ulfenkarn or not. Because the things that happen here really drive the plot in the overarching narrative sense. Because, like I said, all of their pain, their collective anguish is part of the setting. Why are your heroes endangering themselves? Is it to save these people? That's great. They they need a hero whether or not they trust you immediately or not. Um, if you are a bunch of vampires and you want to take the city rather than say, you know, liberate it, well, certainly playing with his food supply is a way to get Rajikar's attention. So it's a place in terms of like the, the narrative plot that just adds a lot to the story. But also, it's a place where the emotional attachment to that story and the people it represents gets to meet the practical darkness of a city run by vampires. And as I said in the first, you know, videos in the series, I think it's specifically dark so that your actions stand out as bright. A little humanity doesn't seem like much in a really safe city like Hammerhall, right? That, that's, that's basic kindness. We kind of expect that from our neighbors. But that same act here makes you look positively Gandhi-esque. No one fights for these people. No one thinks they have value outside of the blood in their veins. But if you make an impact and you change their story, you change the story of Ulfenkarn. And so to me, kind of in synopsis here, the Black Lanes, it is the why of the setting, not just another sandbox to explore. If you come as a bunch of vampires and you want to subjugate the city for yourselves, the why is because you want blood and this is where all the blood is. And if you're a bunch of liberators, the why is the people you fight for. No matter what, the Black Lanes have something for you on a kind of a meta narrative level. So friends, thank you so much for hanging out with me. Our last video in the series is the Ebon Citadel itself. I'm so excited to jump into it and I'm just so grateful for y'all hanging out with me throughout this series. Please go pre-order your copy of Ulfenkarn, City at the Edge of Death. And with the votes in, our next uh, bit of Cubicle 7 coverage is actually going to be Anvil Guard, which they already have a few campaign systems for. I didn't know that. Um, it kind of took me by surprise that they had been releasing stuff and I guess it just never showed up in my feed or something. I didn't realize they already have like two campaigns set out of the uh, Anvil Guard thing. So let's do that. Anyway, I hope you're enjoying these. I will see you very, very soon. Happy Wargaming, friends.